Hi there, my name is Will and I am the founder of Border Audio and today I'm very excited to be giving you a quick run through and demonstration of a brand new library from Border Audio which is called Piano Macro. Now the first thing I know that you're thinking quite rightly is that there are about a billion piano libraries out there, potentially two billion. What is so special about Piano Macro other than the dog that's in the top left of the interface? And it's a very good question. What it really comes down to is the use of contact microphones. Now, contact microphones are a strange beast. Um, they're quite rare in studio use, I would say. They get a lot of use in the live world. But in the studio, the thing is, they are a massive pain to use. And so they don't often see use in recordings, which I think is a real shame because they've got a very unique sound. When you're recording using a contact microphone, you're quite literally touching the instrument. And so arguably, it is the most intimate means of recording an instrument that there is. You get this really delicate, brittle sound. And it's something I think is quite special. When I was at university, I actually recorded an entire album, restricting myself to using nothing but contact microphones. It's safe to say it became a bit of an obsession. But the reason being for that was because I fell in love so deeply with this unique sound that you get from them. And so that's what's unique about Piano Macro. It's a piano library that's recorded using contact microphones. Specifically, there is a contact microphone and a dynamic microphone. You can blend the signals of each, pan them however you would like, and ultimately get a very, very unique sound that will hopefully be useful to you in your productions. Now, the very last thing to mention before my demonstration is the fact that you will need the full version of Contact to run this. Unfortunately, it will not work in the free Contact Player plugin. And specifically, you're going to need Contact 7.6.1 or newer in order to run this properly. Now, with all of that said, let's get into it. All right. Now, here we are in the DAW, and this is what the plugin is going to look like when you first open it up. And really, it's designed to be pretty simple and to have everything within reach immediately. I'll just demonstrate quickly how it sounds right out of the box without touching anything. Here is the middle register of the piano. Here is some of the lower register of the piano. And here is what the higher register of the piano sounds like. So that's before we've really messed with any of these controls. Now, over on the left-hand side of the interface, you can control that sound further. The piano was recorded using a dynamic microphone on the left-hand side, controlled by this knob distance, and a contact microphone on the right-hand side, which is controlled by this knob contact. You can control the level and the panning of any one of these signals. For instance, you might want both of them to be present and panned very far apart, or you might otherwise want one signal to take precedence over the other, in which case you might pan it something like this. It's really entirely up to you. There is also a tone control over here. By default, this sits at about 12 o'clock. You can turn it to the left to darken the sound or turn it over to the right to brighten it. I can very quickly demonstrate how that sounds. So here it is in the middle. If I darken that sound, it sounds like this. And then I can brighten it up like this. We also finally have a reverb on the right hand side of the interface. If I turn that up a little, we can hear how that sounds. Now, maybe I want to turn down the tone a little bit now, turn the reverb up a little more. Maybe I want the sound to be only the contact microphone.
And if I turn the distance up a little now to supplement that. Maybe I could bring up both of those signals and pan them widely apart to get a wider, more enveloping sound. All of this is entirely up to you, really. Now, I should mention that if you ever want to reset any of these knobs to their defaults, all you have to do is hold down Control on Windows or Command on a Mac, and you can click them, that'll bring them back to their defaults. Now, of course, each of these knobs are going to make a substantial difference to the sound, but the effects knobs in particular are only there to get you started in crafting your final sound. As with any other plugin, what I'd really recommend is adding additional effects to let this thing shine. One thing that is worth mentioning is that I haven't done much in the way of pre-compression to the samples. A lot of libraries will have pre-compressed them a bit more heavily than I have. However, in my case, I've essentially left the decision up to you whether or not you'd like the samples to be compressed or how compressed you'd like the samples to be. What you might well find is that the piano wants some compression or maybe a little extra gain. Definitely don't be afraid to do that. What I'll do now is throw on some more plugins, flesh out the sound a little bit, and show you how the library sounds when pushed a little further in that regard. So I've now quickly gone ahead and added some of my favorite effects plugins to this. All I've done is thrown on some slight saturation, a little compression, and one of my favorite reverbs. So here's how that sounds. And off we go. I'd better stop now because this video can't last forever, but rest assured that I've spent plenty of time drifting off into space using this plugin. Hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of what this plugin's capable of. I'm very proud of it. And hopefully it's something that you can find some use for in your productions. Definitely a unique flavor. That being said, I'll let you get back on with your day. I've been Will from Border Audio. And if you'd like to purchase this plugin, I'll leave a link below this video for you to go do that. All right, thank you very much.